Hi friends. So we've been talking about how revolutions uh, for a variety of political and demographic reasons ha seem to happen in waves. And the war for Mexican independence is a part of the wave of revolutions that began with the United States Revolution and then went to France and IT. Um, and then later after Mexico to Colombia and down the coast of the, uh, of the South America. So I want to talk about Mexican independence and um, not going to go into a lot of detail about Mexican culture right now, but I did want to just tell you two things about Mexico that you may have known. Um, one is that Mexico in the time that we're talking about in the time when Mexico got its independence was much bigger than it is today. So this map shows Mexico at that time in 1821 containing what we now call California, New Mexico, and then all the way down the coast to Costa Rica. So all these countries were part of one Spanish colony and became independent together. This is the Mexico that we know today, which has lost land to uh, the United States and where the um, Central American countries have obtained their independence. The other thing I want you to know about Mexico is that um, it is a very diverse place ethnically. And so even when we talk about in people who are indigenous to that area, there are hundreds of different indigenous groups that are in the space that we call Mexico today. Um, and the what's left of that is that we think of Mexico as being a place where people speak Spanish because it was a Spanish colony. But in fact, there are many, many languages spoken in Mexico. Um, some of the largest are um, Yucatec Maya and Nahuatl, um, but there are uh, many, many languages. So um, try to replace in your mind uh, the Mexico that is uh, much more diverse than what we give credit for when we talk about uh, Chicanos or Mexican Americans. The Spanish imposed a vision of uh, race and which is called the Casta system. And it probably wasn't enforced very rigidly, but in the end towards the end of the Spanish um, colonial time in Mexico, these kind of paintings were all over the place, demonstrating the the hierarchy or the imagined or real social hierarchy of different groups um, where people from Spain, the, what they called the Peninsulares, were the highest in society and um, the descendants of enslaved people from Africa were the lowest in society and right next to indigenous people. And um, the Spanish colonial regimen uh, allowed for all kinds of intermarrying and mixing, um, but the this kind of um, gradation of power based on your degree of blood from the peninsula, from Spain, was real. Um, and uh, white uh, or very Spanish, you know, pure blood Spanish people born in the continent were called Creoles and um, those folks had the most power in society, but also wanted more power because um, they were limited in their aspirations by the folks coming from Spain who would get all the powerful jobs representing the government. Um, and then you had um, all the different words that are used, mulatto, uh, mixtiza, uh, to refer to mixed people. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind because we have this image of racism in the United States and racism in colonial Spain was very different. Um, but it meant that there were lots of different groups of people um, who did not have as much power as those folks from Spain. And ultimately that's what this, um, this particular revolution is about. I also wanted to show you this picture of the Virgin of Guadalupe, which is a Mexican saint um, recognized in the Catholic Church, but also an important symbol of Mexican nationalism and this idea, the emerging idea of the Mexican identity. Um, coming out of all those different ethnic groups, what is a Mexican identity? A lot of times it's represented by this image. Um, so the story is that um, a Nahuatl man uh, had this vision appeared to him of the Virgin Mary and um, 
she gave him a cloak to demonstrate that she was real and the image of the cloak is still um, displayed in a church in Mexico um, often with this uh, you know so the image always has this cloak of stars and the the flowers and these symbols are important in Aztec tradition but also in the Catholic Church um, the key thing about the Virgin of Guadalupe was that she spoke Nahuatl and um, so the Virgin represents not so much um, partly it represents Mexican identity with the Roman Catholic Church but partly it represents a, a way that the Catholic Church became uniquely Mexican and that the Mexican identity became more important than other identities that people might have had. So that is all the environment in which the Haitian Revolution happened, the Spanish government was weakened, and Mexicans decided to take matters into their own hands. Father Miguel Hidalgo is the, uh, was the first leader of the Mexican independence movement. Um, so he's a priest who would speak to his flock about the problems of the day. And one of the things that he talked about a lot was the dominance of these uh, Spanish peninsulares over uh, Mexican Creole, mulatto, mestizo, and other people and indigenous people. And um, he decided on September the 16th in 1810 to deliver a sermon calling for a revolution, armed revolution against the Spanish um, called the Grito de Dolores. And um, we have here a painting made by Diego Rivera of that day in which um, Diego imagines that the, the, the words of the sermon are written here. Um, and all the different folks who felt that call to arms. So notice the images of the Quito Indians and other indigenous groups and um, of uh, uh, Afro-Caribbean slave, enslaved people, um, of Spanish people, of working class people, of upper class people. Um, this concept of Mexican independence and the, um, the anger toward the dominance of the Spanish fell on a lot of ears and, and got a good reception from a lot of folks. And so that spurred a violent uprising against the Spanish. Um, Father Hidalgo didn't uh, make it very far, but the, the continuation of that was led by a number of other people. Um, this is Jose Maria Moreos, who was a mixed uh, this child of a, an enslaved woman from uh, the, west of, the west coast of the continent of Africa and an indigenous man. Um, and he was a priest in the Catholic church and took up the call to arms and led an army against the Spanish, among other people. Um, Interribe, Vicente, we're gonna talk about them. And um, also you'll hear the name of this woman uh, cited frequently, a supporter and a, um, uh, an activist on behalf of Mexican independence. So there was a whole group of people who rose up to meet the challenge of leading this movement and they put down their ideas in a document that was negotiated called the Plan of Iguala. Um, what were people fighting for? Why should people fight with them against Spain? Um, so their idea was there would be three things in the new Mexican state. Um, the white color uh, in their three plan, plan of three things was the Roman Catholic Church that the new Mexican state would be Catholic. Um, in the center that it would be independent from Spain and also a monarchy and um, that it would be equality, egalitarian, that um, European, African, and indigenous people would be equal in the eyes of the state. Um, so these are the sort of founding visions of the Mexican state that comes out of this um, armed uprising and the basis for an agreement between the various informal armies that eventually succeeded in getting rid of the Spanish. And you can see that the colors and the agreement and the deal, the sort of concept of the Mexican state is still part of the flag. Now it contains also this image of the eagle, which is an Aztec symbol. Um, and this is a celebration from September the 16th in Mexico today. 
Um, and I wanted to show you a little bit what happens to remember the Grito. Uh, every year people go out on their balconies and scream all of their discontents with whatever. There's no known text to the Grito, so you get to make it up depending on what you're feeling. Um, but the most important of these demonstrations is the president of Mexico goes out on the balcony and um, makes a statement of independence. So I wanted to show you a little video of that. And I apologize here for using um, RT, which I would normally not use, but this just happens to be the best video. September 16th, 2019. So you hear him first naming the heroes of the revolution that I mentioned, um, and then naming the concepts that um, the, the War of Independence was fought for, um, but including democracy, which is actually um, not historically accurate, but is a current aspiration. Um, so just going back a little bit to those words, uh, monarchy was a big part of the vision of that early uh, state, not democracy, um, but equality and some of the other things that he's talking about are definitely um, have always been important. So Mexico does have a democracy, but the story of how that happened, we will study when we study the second Mexican revolution. This is the war of independence and it did not produce a democracy. So I just also wanted to mention that, of course, September 16th is an important day all around in all parts of Mexico, of the former Mexico. And this is a celebration in Guatemala, where um, which is the same, got its independence as part of Mexico. Um, and you have these same kinds of demonstrations and celebrations and parties on September the 16th in Nicaragua and elsewhere. So thank you for listening.